In this video, I'm gonna break down a simple AI workflow that's gonna be able to allow you to talk to your data and you're actually gonna be able to get a image of that data back, right? So this here is just an example of the output that we're gonna be creating with this workflow. Now, this here is a data set I created, just a random data set of basically broken down by month and the interest rate by month. So in short, we're gonna be able to talk to our AI agent here and this agent's gonna go ahead and create a data visualization. All right, so the tool that we're going to be using to do that is called Quick Chart. It's a very simple open API. Um, but without further ado, let's go ahead and just look at a quick demo. All right, so again, this here is the data. We're looking at month and interest rate. So when I go here to open chat, I can say, give me a line graph of rates from, let's say, May to December. All right, so we're sending it, our AI agent, we're, our AI workflow is working here. All right, so we see what's going on here. And bam, at the end, we have a line graph, all right? And let's see if it lines up, right? So looking at May, we see 4.4, it goes to 2.69. Uh, 2 so we see here, 2.69 in July, shot up. July, we're looking at 7.72. So we see here, it's, it's pretty on par, right? So it created a nice little line graph. All right, so let's go ahead and run another test. Let's say, give me a bar graph of rates from, let's say, June to August. All right, so we're gonna run that there. Again, the agent's running through its workflow, sent back here on Discord, and sure enough, June, July, August, it's giving me a bar graph. So in June, we see 2.8. 6.9, then we see 7.72, yeah, just like that. And then in August, whoops, in August we see 6.7. So again, it's doing a pretty great job um, of translating all this over to quick chart for visualization. All right, so let's go ahead and break down how it works. We're gonna go node by node. All right, starting with the first node. So by default, whenever you drag in an AI agent tool, which you can pretty much get by coming here, clicking agent and just clicking on this node right here, when you get that by default, it's gonna come with this chat uh, this chat piece here. However, you can always connect this to something else. So if you wanted to create a form or you wanted to get the input through Slack or something like that, you can always do that. It doesn't have to be in N8N. All right, so this here is the AI agent uh, node that we're using. So for the model that I'm using, I'm using the GPT-4 Turbo model. All right, so for my AI agent node, as you see here, I'm not, I don't really have any specific system message or anything like that, right? So it's just here by default. There's no crazy inputs or anything I'm using here. All right, so the second thing I'm doing is I'm connecting my interest rate sheet as, I'm connecting, I'm sorry, I'm connecting my interest rate sheet as a tool here for my agent. So under tool, I just clicked on this plus arrow and I can just type in sheets and it has the Google Sheets tool. So. The way I have it set up here is that I have it connected to my Google account, which you do have to authorize. So if you haven't already, you do have to go and set up your account through Google. It's very easy to do. But once you do that, you'll go ahead and get, get a N8N authorized to connect into your Google account. Um, for description, set automatically. I selected a sheet within the document and then I selected the document specifically. Now these here, you can actually let the model define um, which ones, but for the purpose of this example, I just want to keep it simple and transparent so you see everything that's going on. All right, so I'm selecting my interest rate um, document. I'm selecting the first sheet, which the rates are sitting on. All right, so the agent's actually able to, when I talk to my agent, the agent's actually able to use that sheet as a tool. So one setting I have here is that I do have required specific out, output format. And by selecting this on, it gives us this extra uh, little piece here to work with the output parser. Now, in, now, this is important because in the quick chart tool that we're using here, right, if you go to chart maker, and actually if you go to their documents, the way that it's handling it, it's through a query parameter, right? So it's, it's a dynamic URL that's being created in order to generate these charts. So in order to do that, I need the AI to basically look at my data set, parse it as a JSON output. So if we look here, Actually, it's not going to be here, but when we have it here, you can actually see that this is how it's sending out the data, right? So it has the labels. It has June, July, August. It knows that I want a bar graph. 
and then it also pulled all of the uh, interest rates from each month, right, in order. And then, and then it also specifies a border color. You can you can customize the look, so it doesn't have to just be this uh, chart with a white background. You can customize the look and everything. Um, but I just left it white. By default, it does come in transparent, but I'm going to show you how that changes here in the code block. But yeah, with that being said, the output parser I actually got from ChatGPT. I basically had ChatGPT provide the AI an example of how the JSON output needs to look like. So that's why it says JSON example. This here just sets context for the AI so that it knows that when I'm passing in data, this lets us know what it needs to look like in order to pass it back. All right, so once the AI does its job of, again, looking at the data, parsing it correctly and outputting it as a JSON, we have, I had ChatGPT go ahead and create a code block here. And this piece here is basically how we get the white background color as you've seen. But yeah, all this does is that it dynamically takes all this, sends it over to QuickCharts Open API, and it returns this URL here. So if I go ahead and just go to this URL, this is the same exact chart that you saw in the Discord. All right, so once that's done, this response to webhook here, basically all this does is I just, I'm able to just get this. You can probably also use a set uh, field here, but usually when I'm building my automations, I sometimes have GPT as a co-pilot kind of helping me. And so re recommended the response to webhook. But nonetheless, you could probably use a set field here, but this is how I have it set up. And then lastly, I'm using Discord as an example, right? But you can use Slack, you can use any other platform that you're looking to get your data on, email or anything like that. I use Slack, be uh, I'm sorry, I use Discord because Discord's pretty good when it comes to actually just getting the URL and putting in a visual here. So this is available as a template. So if you want it, go ahead and check the link in the description. Thank you so much for checking out the video.